Hi, welcome back to our CHM YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for joining us here each and every week. We are grateful um, that you choose to join us. And if this is your first time, then we say welcome to our CHM YouTube channel, which is also called Wednesday's Word, where we come each and every week with a word from the Lord, from his heart to you. And so we believe that if you're here, you are divinely um, directed by God to this channel. And there will be something in this message today that will be um, a source of encouragement, a source of blessing, perhaps a confirmation. Uh, in some way, it's going to minister to your heart right where you are today. So thank you all for joining. Please make sure that you like, comment, and share. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well so you can make sure that you are abreast of all that we're doing here at the CHM YouTube channel, which is also Wednesday's Word. Now, before we get started in our Word, I just want to remind you guys that we are coming up on the, the next and final Worship and Word gathering for this year anyway, for the 2022 year, which is going to be on November the 11th, 11-11-22, so that's kind of an easy um, day to remember. Make sure you guys mark your calendars. If you haven't been to a Worship and Word gathering and you've been kind of just toying around with the idea of thinking about it, make sure that you join us. This is going to be the final one for 2022. Um, Jayla's going to lead us in worship as she's been doing all year long, and she has been doing a phenomenal job. And I will be bringing the word this time. I actually, this year I've had a break sort of um, because the last two Worship and Word gatherings, we've actually had guest speakers to come in. So I will actually be uh, wrapping up the year with the word the Lord is um, already stirring in my heart. So uh, make sure you mark your calendar and come out and join us. Again, that's November the 11th at um, 7 o'clock p.m. at City Church Memphis. And the details are in the flyer that you should be looking at right now. All right, so let's go ahead and get into our word. Um, we've been, for the last few weeks, God has just been talking to us, encouraging us as believers who are kind of going through struggles and going through challenges. We've been talking about how we are the latter temple. God told us that the former, the latter temple will carry a greater weight of glory than the former temple, which was the temple that Solomon built. And it was beautiful and it was glorious. It had the, the greatest... Um, natural beauty, all of the gold and all of the jewels and anything that you could think of, extravagant beauty and glory, uh, opulent glory, but it also had the tangible presence of God. And so us being that latter temple, we are blessed with the opportunity to have a greater glory as God told us we would. Um, but we were talking about even last week, we talked about how that glory sometimes uh, kind of has a pull and a tug on it. Why it's the it's the best and it's the greatest, but it also catch, catches a lot of um, pushback or a lot of backlash, so to speak. And so um, it, it's a, it's a sweet thing, but sometimes it's kind of bittersweet as well because it's kind of a struggle, so to speak. But last week we talked about how um, we ought not uh, consider it some strange thing. We were looking at First um, Peter chapter four. And he said, don't count it as some strange thing when you go through fiery trials, like something uh, uncommon is happening to you. But that's just kind of par for the course for us who are believers. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.12 said that uh, all of us who have chosen to live passionately and to love, and faithful worshipers of God, then we're going to go through persecution. You know, even Jesus told his disciples very clearly, in this world, you will have trouble. But he told us, said, cheer up because he's already overcome the world. And that same thing goes for us. You know, we are living in the kingdom of God, but it's in a world that's antagonistic. It's always going against the, um, the faith and the truth and the belief that we have. And so it's not uncommon that we're going to go through struggles and trials. And I think um, last week we ended with Romans 8.18, which was kind of an encouragement to say, um, this was the Apostle Paul saying, he says, I am convinced that the suffering we endure is less than nothing when it's compared to the magnitude of glory that is about to be unveiled within us. And so as we wrap that up, I was just talking to the Lord about, you know, where are we going next week and what exactly do you want us to know? He's been kind of connecting us week to week. And the one thing I just kept hearing him say or more impress on my spirit is the glory is being unveiled. The glory is being unveiled. And as I began to kind of unpack what he was saying to me, that word unveiled 
It literally means to show something or make something known public for the first time. And it made me think about, you know how um, an artist is maybe working on a piece of art, whether it's a sculptor, sculpturing something, or it's a, um, a painter, an artist painting a portrait or a picture, or maybe even a, 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 a musician when he's creating music, putting their beats together. All of that is done uh, in private. It's done undercover, so to speak. It's veiled from the public. But when it's done, when they're finished with it, and it's the way they want it to be, and it's everything that it should be, then they bring it out into the public, and they unveil it. And it made me realize what God is saying, that there are some things in us he's about to unveil. There are some things inside of us that we never even knew were there that he's about to unveil. That word glory, in its simplest form, it means um, the full weight, the full essence the true nature of a person or a thing. And um, Dr. Miles Monroe, as I was doing my research, I remembered uh, a book I had read about, read uh, by him several years ago. But in there, uh, it talks about, the, the, the title of it is The Glory of Living. But uh, in that, it talks about the glory. And it says, God, the creator, is a God of glory. He created everything to expose his glory. So because he's a creator and he's he's full of glory, everything he created reflected the glory that was in him unseen before he created it. It goes on to say that the glory is the full manifestation of your purpose, which is your true self. However, just as fish need water and seas need the soil to bring forth the full glory that's in them, we also need the right environments so that I, to manifest our true nature and the glory that's on the inside of us. Now glory is released, he goes on to say, when the conditions are right and demands are made on it. Glory is the true essence of a thing and it is its self-manifestation. It's like the glory of a bird is to fly in the air or the eagle is to soar in the air. The glory of a fish is to swim in the water. The glory of the, the glory of a flower is to bloom and blossom. And so the full nature opens up. What's been hidden on the inside begins to open up. And so he goes on to say, as the destruction of a seed is death, is the death of a tree, so the suppression or the retardation of a human potential is the destruction of glory. I'm going to read that again. Just like the destruction of a seed is the death of a tree, so the suppression or the retardation of human potential that is within us is the destruction of the glory. Now, God has hidden glory in every one of us. He has hidden riches and glory on the inside of us, and it is his desire that we manifest it. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, it says that we are his workmanship. Speaking of God, we are his workmanship. And some other translation says we are his masterpiece created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he prepared ahead of time in advance for us to do. So God has these seeds of glory and greatness hidden on the inside of us. And he wants those things to manifest. And so God is about to manifest. Now, not that we haven't been manifesting glory. Whatever it is that you're doing now in your present day, your work, your family, your job, your ministry, that is manifesting glory. But how many know God has layers and layers of glory hidden on the inside of us? It's not just one thing. There's multi layers that God have hidden on the inside of us. There may be multiple things he wants us to do. I'm a wife. I'm also a mother. I'm a preacher, a teacher, a minister of the gospel. I, I, I work on a job. I'm a prayer warrior. There's a number of layers of that that I didn't know all of that about myself initially. It took God getting me in a position where there was a demand put on that glory and it had to come out. It had to unfold. And so it goes on to say, as he said earlier, that the seeds of glory hidden on the inside of us, as Mal Monroe said, that glory is released when conditions are right and there's a demand that's put on it. So we have been in some situations and circumstances over the past several months that we ourselves would have never chosen. Yeah, I know. I know it. We are in circumstances that we would not have signed up for. But God have allowed us to go through some things. 
he's put us in some situations and circumstances that, uh, yeah, quite honestly, he could have stopped it. He could have changed it. He could have intervened. We went through fiery trials. There are some things we've been through that we don't understand and we don't necessarily like. But God has allowed us to go through those things because quite honestly, you all, until we get our back against the wall sometime, we're not going to be able to manifest the glory that's on the inside of us. You know, we talk about the glory of a thing is the, the full nature of it. And you know, as, much, as wonderful as grapes are, the glory of the grape is to become wine. And you know how a grape becomes wine? It's, it's smashed or it's crushed because the juices won't come out until it's crushed. And so sometimes God's put us in difficult situations where we feel like our back is against the wall and we feel the pressure, but it's God getting ready to make the, to cause the glory to be revealed. You know, we talked about a couple of weeks ago about a diamond and you know, when we think about shine bright like a diamond, we all like, we all like the idea of that. And we like the idea of the end result of shining bright like a diamond. But if you remember, we said that in order for that coal to become diamond, it has to be under tremendous amount of pressure and heat. And so many of us have been going through situations that have caused us to feel pressure and where we've been under a great amount of heat. But like we say, God is making us diamonds so we can shine bright or God is causing the glory that is hidden deep in us to manifest. And we might not like the circumstance, but God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. And I'm going to stop here to encourage you with this last verse. As I sought the Lord, I was like, God, so what exactly are you saying? And he took me back to Isaiah chapter 40. We talked about this a few weeks ago where I said, Com well, we talked about comfort, comfort God's people um, because it tells them that their warfare is over. Um, and so he took me back to Isaiah chapter 40. Actually, he's been ministering to me personally from this chapter really throughout the entire year. I had I didn't really understand that I would go through all of what we've been through or even continue to walk through now. Um, but I understand it better and it makes it worth what we've been through. But it goes on to say, we're starting at, at verse 3. And it says, clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains and the hills. Straighten out the crooked places and smooth the rough places. And all of this is Isaiah telling the people, God is talking to his people as he's speaking to us. There's things in us that is veiling the glory on the inside and it can't be seen. There are some things that need to be worked out in our hearts. There are some things that need to be worked out in our minds. There are some conditions in our soul that needed to be worked out. So God has allowed us to go through some things that we would not even wish on our worst enemy. God has allowed us to go through some things that we would never have chosen for ourselves, but because we love him and but because we know he loves us and we can trust him, we've been able to walk through it. We've been able to walk through it so that his glory can be revealed. So straightening out the highway, bringing up the, the low places and bringing the high places down, all of that is a picture of what God has been doing in us through all of the fiery trials and the challenges that we've gone through. But I am so excited for you and for me because the rest of that verse goes on to say in verse five, it says, the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together for the Lord has spoken it. God has decreed that the glory is gonna be revealed and all of what you've been through, you all, is gonna be worth it. Just like Romans 8 said, what you've been through, the suffering won't even be able to compare to the glory that is about to be revealed. So I want you to be encouraged and not stay stuck in what you've been through. Do not get stuck in the pain, the heartache, the sorrow, the sadness. But now you can be encouraged and be excited because God is about to cause the glory in you to be revealed and exposed publicly. You have no idea the good works he's hidden on the inside of you. He's going to tell some of you now you're going to write a book. Some of you, now you're going to preach your first sermon. Some of you, now you're going to get your passport and be ready to travel across the nations. You have no idea the things he's hidden on the inside of you, but they can be revealed to you by the spirit as you continue to trust God. So be excited, be encouraged, and expect the glory of God to be revealed in your life and in those around you. Amen. Let me pray with you. 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your mercy and your goodness. God, we are so excited at what you are doing in the lives of your people. Your word is true, God. You said you will faithfully, God, reward your people for their suffering. You have the record, God. You know exactly what your people have suffered through. You know exactly, God, at the hands that they've suffered through it. And Lord, now in this season, you are getting ready for the glory to be revealed. You are moving back every obstacle that has the glory veil. You are removing the hard attitudes and the pain, God, that has shrouded the glory in darkness. And now, God, the good works, the things you stored up on the inside of your people, the goodness and the greatness, God, is about to be revealed. And Lord, they will be able, we will be able to look back and say, God, it was worth it. And God, thank you for putting me in that situation that I would have never chosen for myself, that my light will shine, God, for your glory, that men may see my good works and glorify you, our God who is in heaven. Father, we thank you now, God. We are excited. We say, God, have your way. We say, God, continue to have your way. God, continue to have your way in us because you're removing everything, God, that will block and shroud the glory so that it can shine bright, God, that we can really shine bright like a diamond for your glory, God. And so we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We yield and surrender our spirit, soul, and body to you. And we say, God, let it all be for the greatness of your name, for the expansion of your kingdom, and for your glory alone. In Jesus' matchless and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, thank you guys so much for joining us. I want you to be encouraged and excited at what God is about to do in you and what he's about to do through you so he can get the glory for it all. Listen, love you guys. We'll see you back here next week. Shalom.